Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Dekin uh, Kamara. Uh, good evening, uh, men of uh, Mount Zion Fellowship Church. Uh, tonight, we have a, uh, I, I would say, kind of a, a busy schedule because uh, to, tonight is the last day of uh, the month long orientation uh, training program that uh, we embark upon. So we'll be covering papers three and paper four tonight, and then the paper five, we'll just leave that one until uh, we have uh, another opportunity to, to teach ourselves. So I will more, more or less do most of the talking, and then uh, we'll sit as much as possible to have time for, for questions. So I'm going to start on the paper three. Uh, which is uh, the organizational structure of a uh, MEM ministry. The organizational structure of MEM ministry. And uh, what, what, is, what is really MEM ministry? When we say MEM ministry, what is MEM ministry? Well, MEM ministry is not just a time for Bible study or a social club or a training, but it's a ministry. A, a process where men and young adults are reached with the gospel and encouraged to serve our Lord Jesus Christ through personal ministry and mission. <coughs> and what do you mean by that? You see, the process of men ministry growth, how, how, how do we grow? How, 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 how do we improve? How do we germinate the men ministry? You see, the process of men ministry includes five basic areas of a personal growth. One of them is evangelism. Evangelism, where, where all the men are properly trained to be able to be fishers of men. Because that was the, the, the main purpose of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why he, he did not go to the synagogue or to, to, to the Pharisees or the, to the scribes to go and uh, look for his disciples. Rather than that, he, he went among the lower people, among the fishermen. And he, what did he say to them? He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So, that, so, that, so one of the, the, the personal growth for men ministry is evangelism. And then the second one is discipleship. Because after Jesus Christ has already uh, 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 recruited them to be evangelists, then, then he trained them. So, so disciple means a follower who is under a master. So, so discipleship is, uh, is another one. So, so the training we are going through now, is part of discipleship and then the third one is men's issue studies which we must continually is a continuous process so that's so that this training is not ending today but it's just a continuous process anytime the opportunity avail itself we will train ourselves and then mission education and then mission action so that so that the, the mission education is we, we are not going to be complacent and be satisfied for 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 re, re, restricting ourselves to a church where we are we cannot reach out so we got to teach ourselves we're going to educate ourselves we're going to train ourselves how we can reach out mission education is different from church education because mission and uh, mission education is 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 the follow-up of evangelism because after you have you, the evangelism you have already cultivated the soil you plant the seed 
and then you now follow up which is mission education and then mission action and that mission action is to continually water what any dimensioner has already sown so these five areas of ministry combine to form a foundation for the spiritual development of men and young adults as they grow in faith and service to our lord jesus christ now the foundation includes five pillars and what are these five pillars one is intercessory prayer very very important praying for one another for the church for leaders and for the missionaries i mean countless numbers we've already mentioned the importance of prayer and i want to thank god that the manzana fellowship church we don't pray with we don't play with prayer at all and then the second one is mission education now to understand the biblical foundation of mission and affirm the work of manzana fellowship church oversee mission and the local association mission so we have to be able to understand what manzana fellowship church stands for it is when we are now grounded in the principle it is not when we are now grounded in the mission it is when we are now grounded in the vision of manzana fellowship church that we cannot impact our our mission abroad that's uh, uh, and then the community around us so then the, the mission ministry projects and in this 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 uh, mission ministry projects it, it forms into these uh, categories disaster relief state clinic state links manzana fellowship church partnership in india and then associational and community project so when we now move to our cathedral the main ministry is going to grow and when it now grows so 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 that, so that uh, we, we're going to have a situation where uh, uh, like uh, they, they have a um, hurricane in florida or, or or earthquake in california or anywhere our main ministry will also have a branch of disaster relief where, where we will have men that will be able to send to philippines to, to anywhere for disaster relief and then the state link so so, so that we, we will also have we will not we will not only be restricted in in, in Bellsville or maryland we, we're going to have a, a, a working relationship with state links so that's so that it's not going to be manzanian fellowship church alone but but we're going to have other churches in which all of us will be working together and then so uh, then we have partnership overseas as we as already we have now in india and then, this, then this, the next one is spiritual development what do we mean by that one he said learning how to be more like jesus through legacy builders men's retreats this is very very important spiritual development how can we develop spiritually one of them is to learn how to be more like jesus christ and how can we do that through legacy builders men's retreats accountability groups and church associational and state spiritual development conferences so so these are very very important and these are the area where the president of the main ministry we, we delegate or we, we we set up a committee that will be responsible for retreat in other words we, we, we're going to have legacy builders that is men men that are builders of character and those are the men that that when we go on a retreat they will be able to to teach us they'll be able to build us uh, to build our character then accountability group then so so that that's so because not everything in this life accountability is very important so we're going to have accountability group and then the church associational and state spiritual development conferences so, 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 that, so that the main ministry will be able to sponsor our men to go for, for, for uh, uh, external conferences where other uh, religious organizational people are meeting. It, in, in other words, we, we, we used to have in the Boy Scout, we have a jamboree. And the jamboree will now bring all scouts together from different, different countries. And I, 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 I want to also believe that there's a, a, a kind of a, a spiritual development conferences involving so many churches in, in which we just have a, a delegate to go and then they will go there they get their pamphlet they get everything and then they come back and report to us then the last one is that men interest events men interest events 
special events designed to draw men to our church through activities with which they already have some interest, such as tennis, basketball, fishing, and other interest events. We are going to def develop definitely. And when we develop uh, uh, under, under the main ministry, you have people that are very good in, in table tennis, men that are very good in long tennis, in basketball, in fishing, in other interest events. And through those activities, where we go out, we'll be able to recruit because it's a form of evangelism. Because when we go, when we go on a retreat, uh, on a, and all, all of us are in our uniform, like uh, the 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 and the T-shirt of Manzan Fellowship Church, we have our folders. And you see people, you invite them to play tennis with you to do this. So they, they, they'll be interested so from which church are you. And then you, you get your folder, you, you give them your folder. So these are areas in which we will, we will, con we will continue to recruit. We will, we will fulfill that commandments of Jesus Christ to be fishers of men. So the biblical foundation of men ministry is found in Matthew 22, 35 to 40. You see, because it is, it is, it is embedded in the, the it's a commandment, it is not a, 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 a man-made theory. But, but the commandment of Jesus Christ, which, which the, the Bible puts down in Matthew 22, 35 to 40, which is the great commandment. He said, then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like this. You should love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all other law and the prophets. And also in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, he said that which is, which is the popular one, which is the great commission. And that great commission is something that all of us should, should be able to memorize in our head. Uh, as soon as it, it's just like when, when they ask you, what is written in John 3, 16, you know straight away the gospel of the world that is gave us some because of son that was believing him. And then, then same thing, what, what, what is written in Matthew 28, 18 to 20? You say, ah, that is the great commission. And what does he say? He said, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. And also in As of Apostle, 1 to 8, I mean 1, uh, verse 8 says, showing the full scope of vision of our church and mission in the ministry. Now, in, 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 the, in, the, great com, in the Great Commission, we, 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 we don't have any cause to be afraid. Because whatever Jesus Christ said is what God said. And what God said stands. It does not go back to Him without accomplishing the, 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 the intent. And, and, and what is it? What is the assurance? He said, he said, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. He said, and lo, I am with you always. It's not that I am with you when you are out, outside. I am with you always, even to the end of the age, till in eternity. So, and then in Acts 1, 8, he said, showing the full scope and vision of our church mission and ministry. But you shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. When, 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 the when that commandment was given, you, you, can, you can say, ah, but it was given in, in, in Jerusalem, and there, were, and there was no Africa then. Did, I mean, did anybody come from Africa? But yes, people came from Africa for the Pentecost, because if you remember, the, the 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 Ethiopians, the Ethiopians came to to Jerusalem through Queen Sheba. When when King Solomon was the king, 
So, so, so and, and that was why, if you still remember again, that after Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit took Philip to go and meet one eunuch of Ethiopia when he was going back home after the Passover. And that, and that eunuch of Ethiopia was reading Isaiah 53. He was crucified for our, he was chastised for our iniquity. He was straight and nobody. So, so, so Philip approached him and said, you understand what you are reading? He said, how can I understand what I'm reading when there's nobody to explain to me? So, so that is, that is, that is a clause, uh, that is a sentence that should, should, should be remembered by all men. A lot of people are reading the Bible, but they don't understand it. But sometimes the Holy Spirit wants to use you to explain to that person as the Holy Spirit took Philip to that man when he was in the, the man was in his chariot and then he said, how can I understand? When do nobody explain to me? He said, okay, I will explain to you. He said, okay, come up, come up on, my, on, on my chariot. And then he started explaining what the Isaiah 53 that was talking about Jesus Christ, the crucifixion, the birth and everything. And then say, what, what am I going to do to be saved? Say, you have to be baptized. And very soon, I mean, they haven't worked much. Then they saw a stream. So the Ethiopian eunuch said, okay, what, what am I waiting for? This is a stream. Baptize me now. So they got down from the chariot. He baptized him. By the time the Ethiopian opened his eyes, the spirit had taken away Philip. So the man went back to Africa, to Ethiopia, a joyful man, a happy man. That he had been saved. so he took the gospel of Jesus Christ back. So that is what so that, that is what this thing is saying. And he said, he said, he said that, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the earth. And to the end of the earth, Africa is included, Australia is included, New Zealand is included, everywhere is included. So, 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 that, so, that, so that there is no limit to where we cannot spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So here we are encouraged to spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. To motivated by our love for him, we express his love to our fellow men. The second Corinthians 5, 17 to 21 points men to reconciliation with God and further they are called to reconciling others to Christ. First, you, you cannot you cannot you, you cannot recon, reconcile others to Christ without you first being re, 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 reconciled to God. And that is the essence of what we are all doing tonight, or that we have been doing for the past one month. That we want all the men to be reconciled to God. So it is when you are not reconciled to God that you can now be a chosen vessel of honor to be used to, rec to reconcile others' people to Christ. And therefore, if anyone is in Christ, and that, that's what 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21 is saying. He said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. And verse 20, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God we are pleading through us, we employ you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So God is pleading with us tonight. Jesus Christ is pleading to us tonight that, that he had to sacrifice his life. He had to lay down his life. Even though he committed no sin, but, but so, that, so that we can be reconciled to God. And, and once you have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, you are reconciled to God. You are now a new creature and you must never go back again. And second, uh, Timothy 2, 2 reveals the role of men in leadership, spiritual development and ministry. Second Timothy 2, 2. 
and say, are the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. That's Apostle Paul writing to Timothy. And the things that you have heard from me, and, and it's also referring to us today, all, all of us are teachers. All of, all, all of us are ambassadors for Christ. All of us are witnesses. So that's so that we should be in a, in a situation to be able to quote this thing that all the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses commit this to faithful men that is that is that is related it to faithful men who will be able to teach others not not just to teach any just jack and harry but to faithful men who, who, will, who will be able to accept to, to get the seed and let the seed find fertile grounds in their hearts men ministry leadership as with any other ministry in the church, strong leadership is essential for a ministry group to develop. Strong leadership is very essential for a men's ministry group to develop. The leaders of men's ministry should have a keen awareness of, of who they are in Christ Jesus. A strong sense of being led by the Holy Spirit, an inspired vision for the main ministry of the church, and a strong commitment to servant leadership. So the leaders in main ministry should have a keen awareness of who we are or who you are. It's a great responsibility. Because if you are given a responsibility, if you are given authority, every increase in authority carries additional responsibility. So you cannot be, a, you cannot be made a leader, and, and you are not able to deliver. You cannot be made a leader and be a bad example. You have to be a good mentor because because once you are a leader, you carry authority, and people are looking at you. The young people are looking at you. So that is why it's saying that you have to be, you have to have a, a, a keen awareness of who you are in Christ Jesus. A strong sense of being led by the Holy Spirit and inspired vision for the ministry of the church and a strong commitment to servant leadership. A servant leadership means that Jesus Christ said, I did not come to rule you to be served, but I came to serve. And in demonstration of that servant leadership, what did he do? He, he copied, he, 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 he told them to, to give to give him a bowl of uh, water, uh, and then he got a towel and he started washing the disciples' uh, feet, which, which is a task that is reserved for the lowest the lowest in a group is the one to wash the people's feet. And why were they washing feet in those days? Because you'll be wondering that, but but it's so ridiculous. Are, are we to start wash, washing our feet in Manzanian Fellowship Church? No. But it was a, it was a, it was a necessary practice in those days because they didn't have uh, luxurious cars, they didn't have tight road. They didn't have all these things that uh, uh, that uh, we, we, we are enjoying taking for granted today. They, they were riding on camel, on horse, on asses, and they have to tread on sander, on, on, on dusty road, miles. So by the time they now get to that decision, all their feet are covered up with dust. And in those days, they don't sit on table and chairs on this thing. They, they sit on the floor or they sit lower. So, so, so they have to wash their feet, they have to wash their head, they have to wash their hands and everything before they sit down to meet. So, so, so that is servant leadership. So the development of men ministry in our own church should be a dynamic process. It is essential to pray for God's guidance. We cannot be dynamic overnight, but we have to be able to pray for God's guidance for our leadership while the pastors and the laymen and the laymen are the elders and the deacons and the leaders they work together in ministry so so it's a, it's a collective responsibility combining all the pastors 
all the all the all the elders and all the deacons and the deaconesses. We all have to work together. So that's so that's so that a training is going the training for 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 uh, this group is going to come throughout the whole year. It's a compulsory training for all the pastors combined with the elders and the and the and, and, and the deacons and the deaconesses. So what do we do? The first question to ask is, what can ministry do in our church, Manzana Fellowship Church? And what can we do in the community that is not already being done with, that somebody that somebody else has already done it, or for the men and the young adults in our church? In answering this question, we must remember to support the ongoing ministries of the church. What do we mean by that? We've already uh, uh, set up a... Uh, uh, our structural um, uh, tree in the church. So we have the young adults, we have the, 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 the youth ministry, and we also have the children ministry, we have the women ministry. So what is our role? Our, our own role is to support them. We support them whichever way, financially, educationally, any way, any, 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 any idea that you can come up with that will enhance the spiritual development of this ministry, either young adults ministry or youth ministry, we will not leave the youth ministry alone to, to the leader of that place. We will not leave the young adult ministry to the leader or the pastor in charge of that place, but it is a resp joint responsibility of the main ministry to assist those people that are heading those uh, various ministries. What do you need? What do you want us to do for you? What can we, how can we be relevant to your spiritual development? These are all the things that we have never been doing before. And it is high time that the men ministry are awakened to their responsibility in the church. So now, so, so, so what we are now saying is that we are not in competition with anybody, but in cooperation with one another. To begin, as we grow both in number and in spiritual maturity, we will strive to establish and coordinate leadership teams within our main group in the following areas. As we grow in the church, because at the moment we haven't, we, 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 we have not got any 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 uh, uh, subgroups at all, because because uh, we, we are we are not many, and even all the numbers that we maybe we are about 30 people but only about 10 if we are lucky are functional but but this is a training for future projects too that we're going to have a prayer team leader so within the, the within the main ministry structure we're going to have a prayer team and it's going to be headed by a leader then we're going to have mission education leader then we're going to have mission ministry project leader then we're going to have spiritual development leader. Then we're going to have men's interest events leader. So that men's interest events leader is, is it's very important for the for the president of men ministry to, to start thinking how we can set up that men's interest events leader that, that uh, by next year they will draw up their plan. So that so that so that so that it, and that plan will include what are the events they have for us for next year. What do what do they want to? We have we have, we have, we have not come up with any plan yet. And if I could recall it, before the general overseer went on his uh, mission trip to Africa, he gave a, a, a definite date for all ministers to submit their, their their program, their events, and all these things. So, so, so that within the main ministry too, all the all our events for next year, uh, the the planning committee of the main ministry, we have to sit down under a leader. And then the next one is men wealth, welfare and healthcare leader. The men's welfare and healthcare healthcare uh, welfare leader is very important because they said they said a healthy nation is a worthy nation. If you have fifty members in the church and forty are spiritually sick. Or physically sick, you have, you have you, the whole ministry is also physically sick. So, so, so the main job of the of the welfare department and uh, uh, so so and, and that welfare and healthcare are combined together is apart uh, apart from 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 catering.
for for the health care of uh, of members by allotting them of all the or, 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 or how they can take care of themselves how they can keep fit how, how, how can they can protect themselves how can uh, 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 how can they uh, take uh, uh, emergency uh, care then why you don't even hear about people because some people are even spiritually sick they may be laughing and coming to church or they may not even come to church but it is the, the duty of the welfare ministry to find out why we have not heard from Pastor Lambo for, for the past one month? Why have we not heard from uh, uh, Brother Jonathan Sisi for the past six months? Why have we not heard about this one? So it is our job to do that, to reach out to these people. And I'm also guilty of that one too, because I'm too busy with my own program. But we have to be able to call them to find out, how are you? We haven't seen you for, I hope everything is okay. Can we pray together? pray together so we have to cultivate that habit when you call anybody always remember that can we just pray together and then you pray together and you, i'm telling you it is it goes a long way and then the last one is men's counseling and chaplaincy leader men's counseling and chaplaincy leader we are not going to leave the chaplaincy alone to our chaplain pastor Mana, because he's a very busy man and once, once, once he has entrusted this ministry to us, we should be in a position to be able to counsel people. And to be able to counsel people, you have to pray for, for spiritual guidance. You have to be in the spirit. And that was what Solomon prayed for. He said, he, he, he said he, because God said you did not pray for wealth, you did not pray for, for, for victory over your enemy, but you pray for wisdom. So that, so that you can be able to judge, you can be able to administer fairness among your people. And, and, and also in that paper, paper two that we said, is there anybody that lacks wisdom? He said, let him ask of God who will give freely. And until you ask, you cannot get. And you cannot share a, a counseling, you cannot share advice, you cannot share knowledge, you cannot share a... a, 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 a a comforting word without without yourself having it so so you have to be grounded to in wisdom of god you have to to be grounded in the word of god and this is that is what we are doing now but it's very very important it's very very beneficial to you to be a counselor you also have to have that experience you cannot share the experience you don't have so, so that that concludes paper one three. So I will just jump to paper one four, and then we can ask questions when I finish. Now, what should be our spiritual commitment? Paper one four. What should be our spiritual commitment as Christian men and spiritual head of our household? As Christian men and spiritual head of our household, we are one to honor Jesus Christ through prayer, through worship, through obedience to his word, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Two, we have to practice spiritual, moral, ethical, and sexual purity. Three, we have to practice spiritual. Uh, we, we have to build strong marriages and families through love, protection, and biblical values. Four, we have to support the mission of our local church by honoring and praying for our pastors and by actively giving our time and our resources, which is which is what Pastor Paul has been trying to to do overseas mission overseas fund. And then reach beyond any racial and denominational barrier to demonstrate the power of the biblical unity. We must never be, be, be partisan. We must never join the group of, of uh, people that uh, have racial discrimination or denominational uh, discrimination. That's no barrier. Because otherwise, we are dividing Jesus Christ and, divide, and we cannot divide Jesus Christ. So that they influence our world. How can we influence our world? being obedient to the great commandment as we have already read in mark 12 30 to 31 that is to be to be obedient to the commandment 
and that is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your heart strength. And then the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. If you can do that, there is no other greater commandment than that. And then the great commission which is already what we have already read to in Matthew 28, go ye. Go ye. So, so it's not a, a loan for the chaplain, for Pastor Mana alone to go ye to Africa, but all the men. It's a commandment for us. It's a great commission for all, all men to go ye in your place of work, at bus stop, at a playground, anywhere. Uh, how can we keep this commitment? How can we? One, we totally surrender our life to Christ as our Savior and Master. Two, we develop a servant attitude modeled after that of Jesus. Three, be a reader, be a knower, and be a doer of the word. Four, pursue vital trusting relationship with other Christian men understanding that we need brothers to help us to keep our Christian commitment. It is very important. And then finally, participate in Christ-centered disciple-making ministry in our church. Fortunately, we have already made a, a, ministry, a, a compulsory ministry for all the men in the church. Every full uh, 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 registered member a man in the church must belong to men ministry and what is our vision and our purpose what is the vision what is the vision of men ministry in the church and what is our vision our vision is building men for christ our division of men ministry is building men for christ and our ministry our men ministry objectives to create opportunity for men to build Christ-centered trusting relationship in which they help, in which they equip, in which they encourage each other to one, to grow in Christ-likeness, to serve others in need, to evangelize the lost, help other churches start, grow and revitalize Christ-centered, life-changing men ministry. It's a lot of responsibilities we have to do. But, but we, we will continue to help one another to be able to grow in Christ-likeness. We will continue to serve others in need. And then we continue to evangelize to the lost people, to the, to the unchurched people, to, to those people outside there. And why men ministry? Why not young adult? Why not we men ministry? Why should it be men means to do all this? And this brings us again back to the main purpose of this training program. The role and the part of men ministry in the church. The role and the part of men ministry in the church. While this question may appear unnecessary, it is important that we clarify what is meant by ministry as it relates to men. We must recognize how the world has negatively impacted and influenced most men and understand our unique biblical role as godly men in an ungodly world. We are facing challenges, especially if you are a godly man. We are definitely, whether we like to accept it or not, dwelling, living in an ungodly world. So what God's word says about who we are what we are to become and what we are to do as we have considered above the essential elements of a vibrant and life-changing men's ministry in the churches. We have witnessed the concerned pastors have for family problems in their church and for lost people, especially men in their community. Pastors meet, Pastor Mana goes to, to the meeting of the pastors they, they, they have problems that they bring bring out for for general discussion. What is how what, what kind of problems are, are confronting the, the Christendom today? They discuss it. 
And those problems are the thing that we should to be, we should, we should be able to create opportunity. We have to, to create time in the main means to, 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 to discuss all these things. And one of them is a typical church congregation draws an adult crowd that is 61% female and 39% male. And there's no lie in that. We see it even every day in our own church too. That, that the, the percentage of men and women, women are always more than the men. Then number two, on any given Sunday in the United States, there are 13 million more adult women than men in churches. Three, the Sunday almost 25% of married church-going women worship without their husband. Majority of women, 25% that are married, they come to church without their husband. And so, 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 so this thing goes like that and, and, and it's causing problems a lot. And, and, and then also we, now, we, we have the problem of the declining population of the young adults coming to church. Why are the young people not believing in coming to church anymore? Why are we losing the young people in the church? Uh, our church is losing the battle for the hearts of men, husbands and fathers. In recent years, many men have seemingly lost interest. And since 1991, church attendance, Bible reading, Sunday school participation, volunteering, and financial giving have all decreased among men. And out of 96 million men over 18 in the United States of America, only 26 million say they go to church, many for the wrong reasons. Of the 70 million men that don't attend any church, 80% of them say they grew up with some sort of church background and these men aren't necessarily opposed to going to church. They just don't see churches as being male friendly. While many men in our churches are involved Christians, most men, that is husbands and fathers in our communities are spiritually detached. They are spiritually detached. They, they say, I, I, I come to church, I, I don't gain anything. I don't gain anything. And we, and we can't deny this. We cannot deny that fact. And that's why we have to be very, very careful. How do we draw people to church? How do we create an environment where we can retain our members? What kind of program, what kind of approach, what kind of uh, 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 activities can we do? What kind of environment, what kind of spiritual uh, 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 aura can we create that will, that will bring them back again to us? So these are all the things that we have to, to be think, talking about. You see, are our church is losing the battle for the hearts of men. With no spiritual compass, many men are in bondage to death. Many men are captured by pornography. Many men are caught up in addictions and sin. Men are confused about masculinity. Men are confused about the solution by the false promises of wealth and power. Many men abuse their wives and children or have abandoned their families physically and or emotionally. Men have rejected their commitment. And this is, this is a fact. They submit the pastor. You see, so 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 that so that the, 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 to marriage and, and then as a result, families are fragmented, and they are fragile. A lot of families are are are, 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 are fragmented and very fragile. And, and I I know some so many people even in our church that that they have this kind of problem. Marriage once considered precious and lasting is no longer seen as safe. Young and not so young people are seeking all kinds of alternative lifestyles and recent developments in our country have opened a debate over the necessity for a constitutional amendment to protect what God intended for marriage. Men are the critical mission. They are the critical mission field in our communities. Although called by God to be the spiritual leaders, most men are spiritually adrift 
We can't, we, we can't, we can't, we, we, we are no longer in charge. We are just drifting. Many pastors and other Christian leaders see this as a major crisis and are recognizing the great need for their churches to reach out to men, being sensitive to their needs. Churches must involve men, not only in projects and missions, but in helping each other grow in Christ, teaching them how to become better husbands, better fathers, better leaders, and witness to other men in the community. And this is where the Jehovah Witness and all these people are doing well. Every Sunday, we don't even announce it anymore now. Do we have any visitor? Because we know that we don't have any visitor because we just refuse to invite anybody to church even before the pandemic. So, so, that, so that we just feel satisfied that only, only us are, are enjoying the, the, the spiritual uh, the blessing and we don't want to invite people even, even within our own household, not even go to the street, invite your own family, we refuse to do it. And why men and women are created equal, which, which we read in Genesis 127, Men are strategic, as we read in 1 Corinthians 11.3. Men are strategic. You see, and, and, and that one, he said, said, said that, uh, but I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of a wife is her husband. And the head of Christ is God. And that is, that is the Corinthians 11.3. So, so that's so that why men and women are created equal. As we read in Genesis 20, 20, 27, men are more strategic. Because if you remember, there was never anywhere in the Bible that says that God had a direct dialogue with women or with Eve or with woman. God there was never, never talked with woman. He only talked with Adam. He talked with Adam. And the only time that God had talk with Eve, it was after the, after the fall, when, when God asked uh, 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 the woman, the, the woman turned, said to God that it was the snake, the, the serpent that, uh, that uh, uh, deceived her. So, so, that, so, that, so that men's position is very, very strategic. And that is what uh, 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 Apostle Paul told us in Corinthians 11.3. He said, but I want you to know, to understand that the head of the every man is Christ. And the head of a wife is her husband. And the head of Christ is God. And then he went on saying again in, in, in verses 11, uh, verses 9 to 11. He said, neither was man created for woman. So I want, to that, I, I want you to note that one down. You just write it down. Corinthians 11, 3. Corinthians 11, 9 to 11. So 9 to 11 said, neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. That is why a wife ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor man of the woman. We all need each other. So so that so that so that a woman cannot do without man. And neither can man do without a woman. And that was why in the in, in, in the ordinance of marriage, he, he, he said he said because God said that uh, once a man takes his wife, he said he will leave his, his family and everything and move to, to, his, to, to his wife and they, they become one flesh. But the woman must respect the husband. And in those days, woman must cover her head before she can even stand in front of the church to, to officiate. But today, everything has been relaxed. You see that they open their ear, nobody cares. See, so, so therefore, men are the critical mission field in our own community. If churches will respond to create male-friendly in, in intentional outreach ministry to and for men, God's order can be restored. If only churches can create male-friendly, intentional outreach ministry. So, so we are going to discuss that one maybe at a later date. How can we create male-friendly, intentional outreach ministry? 
because men need men outside they need us more than any time before now some of them they want somebody to talk to them some of them they want somebody to encourage them some of them they want somebody to share what the, the pain they are going through and uh -uh, uh -uh, you can reassure them that when they come back to or when they come to, to your group they are not going to feel ashamed they are not going to feel rejected they are not going to feel abandoned and they are not going to be mocked because they, they open their hearts to you and you must never uh, 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 make a joke or, or make a, 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 a comment of them you take them as your own neighbor as your brother so that is what it, it, we are saying here so 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 that we have to be very very careful and a challenge meant a leading the challenges you see patrick molly said he said man in the mirror ministry says that christian men who are growing in christ christian men who are growing in christ are spiritually leading their families any man that is growing in christ is also spiritually leading his own family and is also moving forward towards the center of god's will with their lives generally they have five things in common and those men they have five when, when you say a godly man another godly man they have five things in common one of them they have a daily quiet time often in the early morning during which they pray they reflect on scripture and listen to god's revelation for their daily lives if we have not been doing it you are hearing it tonight don't wake up in the morning and start thinking, oh, how am I going to do this day? Oh, my bill, my day, my dad. Ah. You, you, you wake up with stress, you go back to bed in stress. You must be, you must be able to control your own emotion. Like Pastor Mana was preaching, he said, God first, your family second, and then, and then the church. Your work, then come last. So when you wake up in the morning, if 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 if, if you got to go to work at six o'clock, wake up by five o'clock. Let you set, set, set up your alarm clock. Wake you up by five, five o'clock. Spend the, the first ten minutes or fifteen minutes or thirty minutes with God, and then before you start preparing for God. So so that so they have a daily quiet time, often in the early morning, during which they pray, they reflect on the scripture, and then listen to God's revelation for their daily lives. Two they participate in weekly bible study in addition to sunday school and the church sermon so i am employing the main ministry tonight that the bible study the bible study on wednesday is is, is mandatory for all men it's a shame that that you, that you cannot find up to four men or five men in the in, in bible study class and we are the one to champion it we are the one to hold it we are the one to lay the example and there's no reason there's no cause why we cannot make the, the time available and then number three they support the pastor may support the pastor and the ministries of their local church and actively attend and participate using their time their talents and their treasures may ministry build the church Men means to take over the responsibility. Men means to serve the church with their time, with their talents, with their treasures. Then number four, they meet regularly with other Christian men for fellowship, for encouragement, for accountability, for outreach, for discipleship, for ministry, and for mission. So we have three churches in, under that building in Bairnsville. But, but we cannot reach out to those churches, men ministry, until, because we don't know how spiritually developed they are. Until we are certain that we are spiritually developed and we can answer questions, we can meet any challenges, before we can even reach out to them to say, okay, we, we, we want to have a, 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 a kind of a seminar with you. And I'm sure they're very, very happy. But we are not even sure of ourselves. And this is one of the things that we have to be thinking about. And then number five, they have an active personal ministry. 
using their unique spiritual giftedness. One, to reach the lost for Christ. Two, to help family, friends, and others grow in Christ. Three, to serve others in need through help and mission. These are the things that Elder Obeng, Pastor Mana, <coughs> um, Brother Joseph Tolley, all of them, they have been trying, Elder, Elder, Elder Swan Kabo, they have been helping in this uh, free food distribution. They meet these old people, they pray for them, they pray with them, they, 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 they God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. It's, it, it's enough for them. They are quite happy. They see your folder. If to say they are not old, they will have been coming to our church. So these are all the areas that men can help. Either or Ben could not get anybody to help him on Saturday. And that's why you find all the bread in the community room every Sunday. Because nobody nobody to help him. We all discuss here. Everybody volunteer that you're going to help him. But, but it, 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 it's just empty promises. Are men are strategic? How are men strategic? Consider the following results of a survey completed a few years ago and reported by Focus on the Family Publishing. If a child is the first person in a household to become a Christian, there is only a 4% probability that everyone else in the household will follow. If a wife or a mother is first to accept Christ, only 17% chance of the rest family will follow. But if the man, the husband, is the first to, to in the first person to become a Christian, there is 93% probability that the rest of the family will follow. So in other words, we, we are very strategic to God. That in any in any family or on, on, on church people, if your son become a Christian, maybe maybe his sister or somebody just about forty five, about four percent. But if your wife is the first to, to become a Christian, maybe it will, it will drag her children before they grow up. As soon as they grow up, they, they, they decide on what to do. But if this husband is the one, which is the man, I bet you only ninety three percent will go, will follow him to church. We have seen that in the church before. The man came with his family, then then they, the first with his wife, then 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 with with all his children, about six children, he, he brought to church. So as God's appointed spiritual head of the household, when a man accepts and grows in Christ, his family will follow. There is something in handwriting of creation that naturally causes wives and children to look to husband and father to lead out, especially spiritually. More importantly, it is biblical, as we have already read in Ephesians 5, 22-33, and then Ephesians 6, 1 to 4, Satan knows that, and Satan knows that, and even tries to keep men convinced of their self-sufficiency. I don't need God. I'm so sufficient. I have a good job. We can afford to go on holidays. We can afford to do these sports. We go, instead of coming to church, say, let, 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 let's go to the bowling alley to go and bowl. Let us go for a walk. Let us go to Disney Park. I can afford to pay for that. But so, so, Satan knows that and he tries to keep men away. Or see, only other men fully understand the words poor on men, which keeps us from surrendering to and growing in Christ. And this granny statistics shout the paramount importance of churches becoming more intentional in their development of ministry that we attract and grow men for Christ. So every church that wants to grow must concentrate its resources on the main ministry. Because they are this, this, this uh, 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 point point of contact to bring people, to bring families to church. So if you reach the men, you will reach the families. But to reach the men, you have to understand their condition. You see, you, you just can't take anything for granted at all. And there are issues intentionally enter into their world and specifically address their needs we have that we have we, we, we have cases even already in manzion fellowship church we have not addressed some men some men are, are, are having problem 
spiritual problem, everything problem, but you have never been able to address it. Some of them I know. And until you are able to address their issue, uh, or you enter into their world and specifically address their needs, it will be impossible to bring them to church. Because once you, once you succeed in bringing them to church, they bring their families to church. We have not done that. So, so, so in, 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 in one book, he said, How to Build a Life-Changing Men's Ministry. Steve Sunderman says, If ever there is, was a time in history when local churches needed to build men individually and cooperatively, cooperatively it is now. As our world seems to be going from bad to worse, men desperately need and are looking for a ministry uniquely designed to reach them as men. Focus on the issues they deal with. The tremendous turnout and the response to the large promise keepers gatherings in recent years is clear evidence. And the author suggests that the following conditions of men, they serve as critical reasons why men should be encouraged to join together to build authentic Christian brotherhood in the church. Men don't do brotherhood naturally. They don't at all. And the American male is often friendless. Whether you want to, to hear it or not, American male is often friendless. Everybody just going on his own way. But in a world of competition, com comparison, isolation, individualism, and self-sufficiency, that is the world we are all living today. It is when we are in the church that we, 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 are, we, we are united together. But the people outside, you just go your way because you don't even know what that person is thinking about. So we are friendless people. Then the second one, we are emotionally isolated. See himself, American man, see himself as what he does. Not how he feels. Having heard since childhood that men do not show emotion. So you have to be tough. You have to be an American. You see, so so is he, completely emotional, isolated, and then, then number three is confused over masculinity. You see, American man often identify crisis with our ever changing role models, needing to discover their true masculine identity in Christ. And then number four, success driven, convinced that what he does and what he has is who he is. So, so he believes that what he has achieved in life is what they are going to measure him with. And he's proud to wear it. And, and when, when a man is proud to wear it, so, so it is his own achievement, but not what God has done in his life. So how could you expect that person to appreciate God? And then spiritually searching. is man, Every man is spiritually searching. With hundreds of thousands of re responding to Christian events, retreats, promise keeper conferences, mission projects during which large numbers are committing or recommitting their lives to Christ, then what? After that, what? After that, they backslide. They, they are just, just they, they are just the parable of the sower of the sower that the seed fall among the thorns and thistles. They had the, 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 the gospel, they embraced it, they were encouraged, they were happy, but nobody was able to follow up. And when the tribulations of life, the loss of life and challenges of life comes, the, that, that courage, that, that, that faith, you know, dwindle away, and then they go back again to search, they go back again to, 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 to rescue themselves. I say, so, so we are as women tend to enjoy getting together and sharing with one another. Men don't necessarily think about doing that. Men tend to be more active, uh, 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 activity oriented and like to be involved in projects, but by their nature, men often isolate themselves relatively. So our church needs to become male-friendly places with intentional disciple-making men ministry, ministry in which men can be comfortably come together to build trusting relationship through which they can help each other know and trust Christ and grow in his likeness. 
where they can become true spiritual heads of their household as we read in Ephesians 5.22, where they can meet on a regular basis to worship with other men through song and prayer, where they can share their work with Christ as well as their feelings, their failures and fears, where they can support the spiritual growth of youth in the, in the church and talk about ways to raise godly children and grandchildren in a godless society, where they can encourage each other to discover and use their unique spiritual gifts to serve others for Christ and to boldly reach out and minister to other men in a lost world. When Christ formed his men's ministry, he selected men of all backgrounds to be united in him. He taught and encouraged them to minister to each other. Then he told his disciples to finish the work that the Father had given him to do. Likewise, Christ tells us today to help each other to grow up in him and then turn our eyes to the mission field before us. Therefore, the general objective of men ministry is to help each other become godly biblical men, men of integrity, men of intimacy, identity, and influence, men committed to growing in Christ and doing his work. Accordingly, having a clear and agreed upon purpose and associated objectives for a church main ministry will help it to stay on track. So we must be focused on our strength and we are then to serve as the basis for decision making regarding ministry direction. Our main ministry purpose and objective were prayerfully developed and broadly communicated and agreed upon by all men. The purpose of men ministry of Man Zion Fellowship Church men ministry, the purpose of Man Zion Fellowship Church men ministry is to build men for Christ. And our primary objective is create opportunity for men to build Christ-centered trusting relationship in which they help they encourage, they equip each other through grow in Christ and likeness to serve others in need, three, and evangelize the lost. We believe that this serves to define the importance, uh, the important biblical parameters of our balanced ministry and to limit our activities to only those as defined by our clear and agreed upon purpose statement. As our ministry grew, we were led to add to our purpose statement an objective of helping other churches to start and revitalize their main ministry. So this concludes the training for the main ministry. And what I just want people is, it's a, we just have to go through, print them out, print them out and read them. And if you have any question, be free to ask anybody. Because uh, next 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 um, uh, Monday we're going to start on health and welfare. So if there's any question, you can ask me now, uh, uh, and then uh, we can close. Is there any question at all? Is there any question, Pastor Pa? Yeah, this is the conclusion of uh, paper one and four. The paper five, the paper five, we just have to leave that one until we have the opportunity to to, to present it. But on this paper three, uh, paper three and four, I want people to print them out and read them, and and, and we can create time for ourselves at any time, not necessarily on Monday. Any time we can create time for ourselves to to, to discuss it. So, 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 so that's but you are the president, you are the one to organize uh, that opportunity for us to be able not, not to wait until Monday alone. Because if you remember, Edda Obeng was asking that, that um, uh, when are we going to go back into our intercessory prayer on, on, on Monday? So, so, so that which means that maybe they are already getting fed up with the training, they want to go back to prayer. But how can you continue to pray when, when the basic? Uh, 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 tools that you need is there that you, you don't have it. So so which means that so that which means that we will have to design a, a special day of the week for for training, and then then we, we can leave the Monday for them. 
So that Monday we will just have just leave Monday for, for intercessory prayer. And then and then any other day of the week that we choose we decide upon is for training. For training anybody can come online to train to, to, to teach us. So so it's just it's one of the things that you can you can think about. I called him, I couldn't get through. Mr. Mr. President, I think uh, yeah. next Monday is uh, the health department. That's uh, Dr. Osman. Yeah, he is the one, he is the one taking us. Hmm? Okay. 
Just pray, let God, let, let's give it to God through prayer. You know, I think we had a schedule. Amen. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne. Grace oh. this evening. As men of Zion to worship you, to fellowship with each other. So, Father, we thank you for this gathering. We thank you for this fellowship. We thank you for the word and for the message that um, mm. our pastor, Mr. Lambo, has um, shared with us over this mm. um, several weeks. Father, we yes. pray, Lord, that the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge mm. that has been shared with us will be internalized and we will use this word to grow as men. Mm. We will use this word to share our fellow men. And Father, as a result of this training, the men of Zion will rise, and the men of Zion yes, will take Lord. their role seriously in the mm. church. We will take our role seriously in our homes, as the word says that uh, we are the head of our homes, mm. as Christ is the head of the church. Yes, hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We glorify your name. Father, as we depart from this line, we are not departing from your ways. So, Father, we pray, Lord, that you be with us. Be with us in our respective homes. Cover our families, oh, Father. God. Protect us from every harm and danger. Thank you, Lord. We shall not be touched by any disease. Mm. We declare that this day in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for every family that is represented here. Mm. We stand in the gap, Lord. We pray this day, O oh Father God, for every member of Mount Zion, every man in Mount Zion, every woman in Mount Zion, every child in Mount Zion that has been touched by this virus. Father, we pray for your healing. For your healing, Lord. We pray Hallelujah. for your healing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your protection. We thank you, Lord. For your provision. Mm -hmm. For those that are struggling, for what to eat, what they would eat, Father, we pray, Lord, that mm -hmm. you provide for them. Mm -hmm. Lord, those that are struggling with jobs, looking for a job, Father, we pray, Lord, that you will provide for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Father, the kids that are in school struggling with you, the school work, and even the adults in school during this difficult time, juggling mm. school work and making provision for their own. Father, we pray, Lord, that you provide for them. Mm. Be with them, O oh Father God, guide them, Lord, and strengthen them in the name of Jesus. We thank you today, O oh Father, with your name. We give you all the glory. Amen. give you all the praise. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. We show the grace. We show the grace. May the grace of our Lord, May the grace of our Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. and the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest remain and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall join the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 God bless you, Good night. Good night. Thank you. God bless you. Good night.